Oh, yeah, I had a lot to do with Jack Bonner because I did a number of features uh, for him. You know, I, uh, I, I, in addition to PT-109, I have lots of stories about Jack Bonner, and uh, uh, he, he was, uh, you know, quite a character, I must say. Uh, I, 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 one in particular, uh, I don't know whether he ever knew my name because he always called me the kid. You know, and uh, I think only, only a man like Jack Warner. I had bailed out several films uh, that were kind of on the rocks, and I was called over to to bail out uh, one in particular. It had Carol O'Connor in it before he he became famous, uh, and uh, and and one other, and so uh, they would pull me off of. Uh, and send me out. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, one of my favorite films was called Lad a Dog. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's, it's just a beautiful film, and Carol O'Connor was in it. And uh, I became very, very close with him until, you know, he passed away recently. And when we'd be at parties and, and, and meet, and he loved imitating me. <laughs> at the at, at the party scene, he'd say, "Let me show you Leslie as a as a kid director." And when I was doing Lad a Dog, and uh, the light was getting yellow when we we're out in location, and then he'd go in and do my <laughs> Carol. Come on, the light's getting yellow. I'm going to lose it. And he'd, he'd, he'd do a minute routine of, <laughs> of me. Uh, but uh, actually, it was a it was a wonderful picture with a great actress Peggy McKay, who just three years ago uh, won a won a uh, you know, won an award. Uh, uh, for in television, uh, but uh, he, as I say, was always a kid. And a very cute story about him: there were two two great writers uh, that he had who, who wrote some of his his biggest features, uh, and he used to pass them all the day. There's Shavelson and Rose. And they they wrote Cary Grant and, and, and to several several three or four big big hits uh, and and they used to um, he always see past them to go by to the writers gilding he would come out from the executive offices and they had to pass to go along the writers building and many times he would uh, he would he, he, he would they would pass him and he would always say hello boys and Jack Rose uh, I recall telling me the story once that once uh, Mel had to go to the bank and 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 he came down alone, and he passed Jack, and then Jack, who would never know, I was the kid, I don't think if you said Leslie Martinson, whether he'd know me, because uh, he uh, really uh, just didn't have a, uh, wasn't important to him, whether he got a nickname for you. And he walked by Jack Rose, and he said the same thing, hello, boys, <laughs> such a thing. But he was very, uh, he knew, he, he he had certain he had so so much charisma about him. He just had an instinct, you know. And he and he talked about handsome people and beautiful leading ladies and handsome men. And you'll never go wrong, you know, in the picture in in your industry. And and uh, he had a, a great inner sense, you know. And one cute story about it was. Uh, uh, PT-109 got uh, really quite excellent press, but uh, the New York Times critic, Bosley Crowder, you know, who was uh, the biggie at the time, said that uh, he uh, he didn't knock the picture, but he, he, he didn't share the enthusiasm that, that all the other critics have, and, and he said uh, director Leslie Martinson threatened the firepower uh, it had enough firepower there in the evacuation of Choiseul, uh, where the PT boat came in and rescued these Marines who were, who were, were trapped uh, at Choiseul. And uh, he said some of the locations that were, were shot, and it's the most, most beautiful picture uh, shot by an Academy Award, Award director. Uh, and so I wrote a letter and, uh, he, and he said, well, we got great press, what do you think of Crowther? And I said, oh, I, we were at the dining table, and Mervyn Leroy was there, 
when 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 you when I was directing a feature, I could eat in in the in the dining room where all the the, the producers from the so forth. And if I were on a picture in in at that time in Christmas, I was a three bottle man. If I was back in television on Christmas at that time, I was a one bottle man. I think it's kind of amusing, you know. And I was at the table there, and I read the letter, and I said, one would think that uh, the Bosley Crowther, the, the you know, editor, would, would certainly be aware of the fact that most of this was shot, and uh, everybody, all the other critics, talked about, you know, the photography and the magnificence of, uh, of the film. And you say a great deal of it was shot in the soundstage when it was shot in Key West. And I said, says that. And I said, as far as the evacuation of Fazul, you said, I said, the, fi for the firepower that I used, the PT boat had, had uh, nothing on it, just 50 millimeters, you know, except torpedo tubes or whatever have you. No firepower at all. One would think that the dean of critics would recognize. I said, and I said, too bad that Daryl Zanuck didn't uh, avail my services. Just think of the millions I could have saved if I did the, the landing sequence in his D-Day, you know, and I wrote this letter. And uh, J.L., the colonel, everybody called him the colonel, not Jack or Warner or anything. He was known as a colonel. You know, he did service in the army, and he liked that. Uh, and I said, uh, he said, uh, did you mail it? And I said, of course not, colonel. I'm too young to die. <laughs> I'm not about to send that to Bosley Crowther. <laughs> and he said, uh, he turned to his, his secretary, his lifelong secretary, and said, uh, would you get me that letter that I wrote to Mr. Crowther, please? Have I ever disturbed your lunch that you remember? And he said, no. Well, just this once, do you mind? That's the character of Jack. He went up and came down, and, and then he said, he turned to us and he said, now, let me read you the letter that I never sent. And he came, to, and he did. He read the letter, and it was a scorching letter. But even he, Jack Warner, was not about to send this letter <laughs> to Bosley Crowther. But he took the time to write this scorching letter. And that was uh, Jack Warner. But uh, as I say, he, uh, he knew exactly what he just had a great instinct for pictures and what and 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 just knew and just by the, his track record when when he was there you know one hit after another and he was he was he, you know he had to okay the scripts he okayed every single thing that was done so uh he, the the eccentricities were there but uh with it all that that instinct of what makes what makes uh, a good movie